Hey everyone, so today I'm going to be doing the books and tea tag which was created by Olivia Pope. She very kindly tagged me in her original video so I am finally getting around to doing it today. Thank you so much for tagging me Olivia. This is the perfect tag for me. I love tea, although I'm not one of these like tea connoisseur people that know all about like fruit teas and herbal teas. Just give me an everyday red label tea bag and I'm good to go. So first up we have Breakfast Tea, a book that is a strong staple. I did think about a lot of classics for this, I think Olivia went for a Jane Eyre, you know, a book that everybody knows, most people really enjoy. But I've gone slightly more modern and I've gone for Room by Emma Donoghue. It's a book that everyone knows about and everyone that I know who has read it has loved it. Even people that aren't massively into reading have loved this book. It's a book told from the perspective of a five-year-old boy who has no n nothing outside of the room that he was born in. He thinks that the only thing in the world that exists is everything that is in that room. As we move forward with the book, we find out that this is because his mother was kidnapped and raped, has been forced to live in this room ever since. And this book follows what happens to them and how their lives change. Absolutely brilliant, brilliant book. As I said, I've not really heard that much negativity about it at all. Everyone that I know who has read it, even people that aren't really big readers, have absolutely loved it. So a fantastic staple, I think. Next up is Earl Grey, a book that is classic and sophisticated, but with a bit of a twist. I really struggled with this one because obviously the go-to is classics and I'm not a massive classics reader, I'm much more a contemporary reader. But eventually I came to Fun Home by Alison Bechdel. This is a graphic memoir about Alison's life, about growing up and realising she was gay and the relationship she has with her father and the realisation she comes to about his sexuality. I think it's definitely a classic or at least a modern classic, incredibly important in the queer or LGBTQ plus canon, but it is a graphic memoir so I guess that's a bit of a twist. Next up is Chai Tea, an exotic book set in a country different to your own. And for this I have gone for The Reluctant Fundamentalist by Machine Hammond. I read this in my first year at university and I absolutely loved it. It is set in both Pakistan and America. Well, got a very interesting narration style because it is set in Lahore, but it is entirely dialogue. The book is entirely this guy, Sean Jez, talking to an American guy. I think it's like a restaurant or a cafe. And the entire thing is what he says to this American guy. He talks about what it was like for him to move to America. And this is just a thoroughly, thoroughly brilliant book. If you want a book that is going to make you think about other cultures and your own culture and your perception of those different cultures, then I would definitely recommend The Reluctant Fundamentalist. It is a fantastic book and possibly one of my favourite endings of a book ever. I know it divides opinions but I really love the ending. I actually think they drink chai tea in this book so it's quite appropriate. Next up is Peppermint Tea, an invigorating book and for this I've chosen a poetry collection. I have chosen When I Grow Up I Want to Be Mary Beard by Megan Beach. This is a poetry collection that is powerful, funny, visceral, emotional, political. It is performance poetry and that really comes through in the writing but nonetheless it is still really great to read. How I know that I have really connected with a poetry collection is that afterwards I get a huge burst of creative energy and I want to write loads of my own poetry and I think that is definitely, definitely invigorating. I would highly recommend this poetry collection to anyone, but obviously particularly if you like feminist, political, funny poetry. Next up is Green Tea, a refreshing and different kind of book, and for this I have gone for One by Sarah Crossan. This is possibly one of my favourite YA books of all time. This is about a pair of conjoined twins named Grace and Tippy. so that is something I've never read about before. I've never read about conjoined twins. For financial reasons, the girls are no longer able to be homeschooled, so they have to go to a normal school for the first time in their lives. There's a lot about family relationships in this, um, the financial burden of the medical treatment that the girls need, a lot about bodily integrity, but as well as that refreshing element of reading a book that has representation of kinds of people that I've never read about before, this is also written in verse poetry, which is just amazing. I love it so much. It's a very chunky book, very quick to read. I flew through this in, I think it was one sitting. Despite it being written in verse poetry, it is very accessible, even if you aren't that familiar with poetry. So yes, definitely refreshing and different and I would recommend it to everyone. This is Assam Tea, a strong and rich blend and I took this very personally. I thought of the things that I 
really really love in books and I came to the conclusion of the Museum of You by Caris Bray. It's predominantly about a young girl named Clover whose mother sadly passed away when she was very young, when she was only a baby. Clover begins to go through a bunch of old belongings that her father has hoarded and begins to curate the museum of her mother, the Museum of You. The reason I would consider this a strong and rich blend is because it has so many things that I love in it. It's a book set in the north of England, which I love. It has a huge amount to do with family relationships and um, parent-child relationships, father-daughter relationships. It showcases the strength of single parents. Very, very funny. It has the Great British Bake Off in it, although it's not technically called the Great British Bake Off. It is beautifully written. The characters are so strong. Like, I would read a book about all of the characters in this book, even like the minor or supporting ones. I love The Museum of You. It is possibly my favourite book of the year so far. This is Chamomile Tea, a cosy bedtime read, and I really like reading um, sort of whimsical children's books before I go to bed. I haven't done it in quite a while, which is a real shame. <laughs> books that aren't too difficult to wrap your head around and read, where the prose isn't too complicated, books where they're quite funny, and books where if you fall asleep reading them, it's fairly easy to work out what's going on and work things out the next time you pick it up. I have two answers for this, A Series of Unfortunate Events by Lemony Snicket and The Fairyland series by Catherine M. Valente. Obviously a series of unfortunate events follows what happens to the three Baudelaire orphans after their parents pass away in a terrible fire. It doesn't really sound like calming bedtime reading but it definitely was for me. For quite a while they were my go-to bedtime read. Uh, the only reason I've taken a little break from them is because I don't have the eighth book in the series which is where I'm up to now. And I've only read the first book in the Fairyland series which I don't actually have here because I have a ebook e e copy of it. It's kind of difficult to say much more than this is what happens to a girl when she goes to fairyland. Very kind of Alice in Wonderlandy and fantastic whimsical bedtime reading. Next is Rose Tea, a flowery and gentle read. And for this, I've gone for Anne of Green Gables by L.M. Montgomery. This is about a orphan named Anne and what happens when she is taken in by Marilla and Matthew, a brother and sister. Actually quite a lot of heavy stuff in here, but it is a brilliant story about a young girl growing up, becoming a woman, and it is brilliant to go on that journey with her. I actually have a full discussion video that is a gender reading of this book, and I will link that down in the description if you are interested in that. The scenery in this book is really lovely, so I guess that fits with flowery. And yeah, I just think it is really nice, easy reading. This is Milk, a book to take the edge off, and I was kind of thinking about how to interpret this for quite a while. Something that makes things not as strong, something very pleasant, something very easy to read. But then I was like, I like my tea really strong. It's kind of a thing in my house that I have really strong tea and everyone finds it really weird. So I went for Nimona by Noelle Stevenson. This is a graphic novel, so obviously it is very quick to get through, very easy reading. But I wasn't expecting it to pack as powerful of a punch as it did. And I think that's kind of how people feel about my tea. This is an absolutely brilliant graphic novel about a girl named Nimona who has the power to transform into lots of different things. She decides she's going to become a sidekick to a supervillain named Lord Back Blackheart and this follows what happens to them and the adventures they get up to. It's a brilliant, brilliant book. It's a fantastic graphic novel and I think everyone should read it. And finally is Sugar. A sweet book and for this I have gone for The Guest Cat by Takashi Hirati. It's a very short book set in Japan and it is about a young couple who are you know starting to settle down and one of the cats in the neighborhood I think it might be next door's cat begins to visit them and it's about the relationship and bond they form with that cat. It's just a lot about cats. I mean underlying there's kind of a lot about Japanese culture and economy and housing market but also got cats in it like a lot of cats and the relationship with the cat is very sweet there are many cats in this book as far as I remember and yeah it's it's a book with lots of cats okay so now I need to think of some people to tag um Vanessa from Chuboski, Melissa from the bookish babbler Eva from Fred Weasley died laughing and let me know down in the comments what you think about my tea-ish book choices just realized that I didn't make myself a cup of tea for making this video how ridiculous.